On May 4th, Leo Tikowski posts a video on his Instagram feed, and uh, it shows him executing a move that's really, really crucial to having your repertory in the hot shop. So I wanted to show the video again and break it down in hopes that you can learn a little something from watching the video. There's a ton you can take away from it. And if you don't know Leo, he's a really good glass blower from um, up in uh, Brooklyn, up there. <laughs> and um, yeah, here's a video. So here you see him coming out from a heat, just dropping it out, stretching out the bubble, getting a feel for it, and he's sitting it down with it and just letting it stretch. And then here's the move, boom. Whip it up and then start to work on it, blowing it up, shaping it with the paper, doing that sort of thing. So that's all the move really is. Just that really short little like couple seconds there, but that's really, really crucial because anytime you're making like a real tall piece, real long things, big tube, something like that in the hot shop, you want to be able to get it really hot and drop it out, but then how do you get it up and start to blow it up or work on it, right? And he does it really well, right? It's just a really good angle, capturing a really good glass blower, doing this move that's crucial to the hot shop. So I want to break it down so we can understand what's actually going on there. So, so I'm just going to leave this looping for a minute so you can watch it while I'm talking. Um, but take a look at the glass, right? See the way that it's moving. That's the first part of it. Like it's moving like a, like a slinky where each part is just sort of feeding into the next part. It's moving nice and smoothly. There's no kinks, there's no corners. And part of that is like an even setup. Even thickness, even heat means even movement. So it's not strictly speaking necessarily. You can have thicker parts so the heat doesn't have to be perfectly even. But the more that you get away from something that's even, the less the forces are going to affect that bubble uniformly, right? They're going to affect the different parts differently. So that's one thing. Another big thing that you got to notice is that that tip of the bubble is always moving above the sort of center line of the pipe. So if you imagine that pipe uh, being at like the center of a clock, it's always sweeping from like 9 to 3 and 3 to 9, moving through 12 o'clock, right? It's always above the center line, not like sweeping below to like 6 o'clock. And uh, you know, if you catch me in the streets, we can talk about why that is important, but just suffice it to say that it's probably not going to work out well for you if gravity's already pulled that bubble down or if you're like chasing that tip, probably going to kink it because the forces at play just aren't, don't lend themselves to making these moves. So anyway, moving on, uh, it's good to look at the bubble, but whenever you're watching videos like this, always look at uh, what the person is doing because it's what they're doing that's causing that glass to move that way. Glass is always just a reflection of what you're doing to it. So look at his hands. Look at the way that he's moving that pipe. So there's a couple really crucial things to notice that can make or break this move. First is that as Leo's turning, he's going away from him. He's rolling the pipe clockwise and during the last moments of the dropout, it's pretty far away from his body. He's not got it right next to his stomach. It's far, you know, along the length of those rails. And what's important about it being farther away from you on the rail is that um, when you tuck your arm, your hand underneath your armpit, as that next move shows, if the pipe is directly next to you, the, the, the ergonomics of it just don't work out. Your elbow has to kind of come in front of where your wrist is and corrupts your whole posture. It's no good. So having the pipe farther away from you at the start of that move just naturally lends itself so much more for the direction that your hand uh, goes. Right? Try it out for yourself. Also notice that the pipe is pivoting from a point that is, let's say, a foot or so up from the moil. The moil's not right next to the rail. And that helps generate the sort of forces that you're going to need in order to flip the glass over, especially if you're talking about, you know, any sizable quantities or like really hot stuff. This is something that has to be done really, really quick. You can't go slow when you're making this, uh, this transition because the glass will have time to bend and kink or, you know, otherwise fold. So you got to go fast and having the pipe farther on the rail helps you slide it up, yank it up really quickly and uh, generate some of that force. So he's got the pipe on the rail, he's turning away from him, and then he flips his hand, palm up, and tucks it really, really far up underneath his like armpit. And that motion flips the tip of the glass to the other side of the pipe. So it goes from nine o'clock to three o'clock. And then right as it's reaching the apex of that turn, he turns his hand palm down, coming out from underneath his armpit in a nice smooth motion like an airplane kind of coming in for a landing to touch down on the rail. And during that motion, he's turning his hand palm down. So he's actually turning counterclockwise during that portion of the move. And it's that change in direction of turn executed sort of quickly and with authority combined with this is kind of subtle, but an adjustment of the pipe from being diagonal, extending out from his body to being parallel on the rails right in front of him uh, that flips that tip around to 
you know, his side of the pipe where he can catch with the paper and basically brings that tip in line with the, uh, with the pipe once again. And that part where you bring it down has to be executed real fast. There's not time to go slow because the piece will kink and things won't work out. It has to be done really aggressively in order to whip that tip back towards you where you can catch it with the waiting paper. Now, you don't have to use a paper. You can whip it back and then you know cut, start cutting a jack line or something like that. But that motion, that whatever tool use or something that you're using, it comes in at that point in time. When, it, when the tip whips back towards you and you start rolling away, that's when you hit it with a paper or your jacks or whatever it may be. So that's the basics of the move. You really just got to practice it in order to figure it out. But um, if you are trying to do it and you're just ending up with problems, you don't think that you can finesse it the way that you see people like Leo do it, make sure that you understand the mechanics of it first of all, and then build that into your practice. Eventually you will get it and it is a found fantastic move to have in your arsenal in the hot shop, especially if you do any tall shapes like you know dropped out vases or big tubes, things like that. 100% wonderful move to, to, to know. So anyway, that's a little video. Thanks to Leo for making it. Um, and uh, you know if you have any questions, come check me out at the East Falls Glassworks or you know shoot me an email. Um, but uh, yeah, best of luck.